Bishop Kimishis de Stelotopo, the Greek Orthodox Jewel in Pride of Brooklyn, is a community that is very near and dear to me. I served here as a cantor for six years, while I was simultaneously employed at the Archdiocese as a layman in the office of the Chancellor, as Your Eminence already stated in your remarks. So you see, this parish is not simply a substitute or temporary home away from home for me. It is my home. And to return here today for this significant moment in my young priestly ministry is truly humbling and moving. For I still bear vividly within my mind the many sweet and precious memories of my time here. The community itself is a very loving one indeed, and this is manifest in their swift and unhesitating response to host this ordination here today. And I must inform all of you that the preparations and accommodations that we will enjoy here are all due to the loving generosity and warm hospitality of the devout faithful of this church. Therefore, I extend to the entire community my utmost gratitude and appreciation for graciously hosting this special occasion and for underwriting in full the luncheon that will follow. What I would like to make known publicly now for the first time is the very special nature of this day. While you may all know that I was given the name Michael by His All Holiness, our ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew, back in February of 2020 in my ordination to the, di to the diaconate, what you do not know is that this was an intimate and private desire of mine for many years. Since my youth, I pray to the Lord with the heartfelt entreaty that my name could one day become Michael instead of George. Unbeknownst to me, of course, that I would later follow the path of a celibate clergyman. And as you can imagine, to my surprise, this very name of Michael was given to me at the age of 34. Of course, I share this with all of you in an expression of gratitude to His All Holiness, who, despite my silence on this matter, so as to ensure that it was something known only to God Himself, and to his heavenly chief commander, the Archangel Michael, his all holiness carried out this revelation of the Almighty's divine will through his loving and, and paternal patriarchal gesture. Therefore, the nature of this day is brightened even more by the feast of my patron, Angelic Host, a feast that is celebrated today by all Orthodox Christians throughout the entire domain. Your evidence. Just as how you graciously agreed to perform my ordination to the diaconate in my home parish of St. Demetrius in the holy metropolis of Chicago, you have granted me once more the pleasure of fulfilling my request to have this ordination take place here today. However, I must apologize to our local clergy for not being able to accommodate all of them inside the holy altar. As you can understand, while it was mine and Father Damaskinos' desire to have all of our clergy serve, it was just not possible practically due to the physical limitations of space. I am thankful nevertheless for your prayerful presence and participation, and I kindly ask for your understanding. Please know that I personally thought it would be best to give precedence to the clergy who have traveled here from afar, so that they too may enjoy the very special honor of serving together with our Archbishop, a privilege that I believe wholeheartedly in sharing with those around us whenever possible. At this point, Your Eminence, I would like to recognize two good friends of mine, the very Reverend Grand Ecclesiarch Aetios, who, as you said, is the director of His All Holiness's private office, and the very Reverend Grand Sigan Osiakobos, who is the director of the Ecumenical Patriarchate's English office. I have known them, and they have known me since we were laymen. And I thank them both for traveling here from the Queen of Cities and our all venerable ecumenical patriarchate in order to be with us. They both expressed a sincere desire to be here well before I even had the chance to invite them formally. And I thank His All Holiness deeply for granting them His venerable patriarchal blessing and permission to serve here today. I greatly appreciate the honor of their presence 
and extend to them a very heartfelt welcome to New York City. Present with us this morning as well, Your Eminence, we have Father Andrew Georgiadis, my former parish priest from Chicago, who has traveled here to be a part of this personal moment of happiness and delight. Father Andrew, thank you very much for your presence. You were instrumental in helping to organize my ordination to the diaconate a few years ago, and I am deeply grateful to you for the sacrifice you made to come here today. Together with his esteemed clergyman, Your Eminence, I would like to thank my friends, relatives, family, loved ones, schoolmates, classmates, and co-workers, as well as all of our fellow clergy, esteemed archons, and beloved lady, for joining with us today in prayerful celebration and thanksgiving. I am profoundly humbled and greatly moved by this honorable turnout of brothers and sisters in the Lord, who at the very first news of my forthcoming ordination put aside their duties and obligations in order to share in the wonderful joy of this day. Of course, to all those who traveled from afar, from out of state, and even from abroad, please know that I deeply value the sacrifices you made to be here today. And for those who are unable to attend, kindly know that we are undoubtedly united with one another during this moment in spirit and in the common bond of prayer. Your Eminence, before I conclude my remarks, I wish to briefly thank one last group of important individuals. I would like to start off first by recognizing and thanking our esteemed chanters who hasten to be here today in order to brighten the service with their melodic voices. But one person I cannot thank enough is the esteemed and much beloved Kutopsavi of this community, Dr. Dimitrios Tejagas. Dimitri and I chanted across from each other here at Kimisi for six whole years, Your Eminence. And it was during this time that I was more intimately cultivated in the sacred wellspring of the Celtic art's precious riches and immeasurable treasures. The knowledge that I possess today in visiting music was fine-tuned by this humble, yet leading church musician, and I will remain ever grateful to him for that. Next, Your Eminence, <coughs> I would like to express my deep respect and gratitude to Father Damasquinos, this parish's presiding priest. For almost 40 years, Father Damasquinos has shepherded this community in a most exemplary fashion and set a high example as to how a clergyman should conduct his priestly and pastoral duties in his service to the community. The hallmarks of his ministry have been his priestly discretion, empathy, compassion, seriousness, devotion, and swiftness to address any need that arises, be it pastoral, liturgical, or administrative. But these are only just a few of his many God-given talents and qualities, though. The most striking for me has always been his silent yet charismatic leadership, never shying away from any challenge or adversity, regardless of the magnitude. And looking up to Father Damasquinos all of these years, if I could take one, th one thing from him, it would be that. Strong and silent leadership, always leading by example, and peeling away the layers to expose an even firmer resolve and deeper priestly, priestly resilience, resiliency in times of difficulty and hardship. Of course, I would be remiss in not mentioning the fact that Father Damasquinos coordinated and spearheaded the preparations for this entire day. And this is something for which my parents and I are truly grateful. Together with this inspiring example of a clergyman, Your Eminence, I must also thank the Reverend Proto Presbyter Anarikos Stavropoulos, who has fashioned me since the earliest years of my youth into who I am today. Indeed, I am, I am most grateful to the Lord for these two colossal examples of what it means to be a priest of the Most High God. Having been under the wise tutelage of Father Anarionos for over 30 years, I have time and again reaped the fruits of his pastoral efforts, priestly wisdom, and fatherly guidance. For me, he has always constituted the model of what a parish priest should be, and I owe so much to him, and it's a debt that I can never repay. The confidence that I possess today to step into the holy altar and receive the grace of ordination is only possible because of him. And I know that I will call upon his decades-long experience even more so moving forward now. And lastly, Your Eminence, I would like to address my dear parents, Alexa, Rosa, and Maria, two devout servants of the Lord, 
who have reared me in the faith with unwavering commitment and devotion. I owe everything that I have achieved in life to them. All of my accomplishments and successes are due to the life lessons that I received from them, but also to the firm foundation that they have instilled in me. They adorned our household with the precious pearls and virtues of their hard work, their piety, integrity, honesty, philanthropy, hospitality, dignity, and nobility. They have never sought out any praise or commendation, publicity, or recognition. Instead, they prefer to have their works known only by God, always willing to assist and support others silently in any way that they can. <clears throat> their example is one of an aspiring saintliness and righteousness that I believe all Christians are called to practice, and one that I am presently still learning. They have remained by my side every step of the way, strengthening me and even aligning their own will to mine, so as to facilitate my dedication to the Church, and I must reiterate that I stand here today only because of their unwaiting love and parental affection. Together with them, Your Eminence, I am thankful for still having in this life my beloved, my beloved grandmother, Condilia, who is 92 years old. My grandma is the one who first took me by the hand at the age of five and introduced me to the church. Every year, I would accompany her to the divine services during my three month stays in Tripoli for the duration of each school year's summer recess. And it was during this time that my love for the church grew and took root. Her wish was always to see me ordained to the priesthood one day. Unfortunately though, it is not possible for her to be here. Nevertheless, I know that she has joined with us in spirit and in prayer, and she eagerly awaits my next visit to Chicago, as her request for some time now has been to come to me for holy confession. Of course, with your evidence's paternal blessing and permission, I would like to respectfully ask that when this time arrives, I will be allowed to fulfill this request of hers, making my grandmother's confession the very first that I ever hear. And so, your eminence, I would like to end with an earnest personal pledge to serve the Lord, His Holy Church, and His flock to the very best of my abilities. I will do whatever I can to minister to the needs of our sacred archdiocese and to fulfill the duties and responsibilities that you entrust to me. I will always strive to be a faithful son of the Mother Church of Constantinople and of our beloved ecumenical patriarch. And I am ever grateful for the privilege and honor to remain by your side and to continue to serve you, our Archbishop of America, in your highly esteemed office. I thank you wholeheartedly for this blessed opportunity to progress in my priestly ministry and vocation, and I am thankful to you as well from the very bottom of my heart for deeming me worthy to begin serving within a parish setting. This lifelong aspiration of mine has finally been brought to fruition by you, Your Eminence. And I thank you for opening this door to the heavenly beauties and splendor of the priesthood, as well as for continuing to oversee and contribute toward my overall priestly development, personal growth, and spiritual formation. Thank you very much.